Hello, and thanks for joining us. We're diagnosing and fixing a problem on the WT1501CW by LG. And in this, we have the usual wet laundry with the code IE. What it does is either by timing the amount of time it takes to fill or sensing the water pressure, it determines that it's out of range. So the reason it's doing it, it can't be the water pressure. We get plenty of that. It looks to be like some kind of debris has stopped up one of the valves. I'm going to drop the water pressure off. Mine shuts off with one valve. Yours may shut off with two. I closed off the hot and the cold to the machine and continue it to run and it's now down to a drip which isn't far from what I did have and I've got an inlet that needs to be removed I also have the power cord and the drain I'm going to start with just the hot side and there is some corrosion on these pipes so they're kind of stuck These machines cost about a grand, so anytime you can fix something, get by. Middle of the winter, I don't really want to drag any machine in and out of here. I could go buy one, but I kind of like these machines. They're efficient, quiet, kind of getting used to them. So removing that first line, which I think is the hot, we're making sure the seal stays in the hole in the pipe. If that falls out and you reconnect it, you will have a leak, guaranteed. And what I think is the cold side. This one had a little more corrosion on it than the other. The outer nut should spin on the pipe. That one didn't. I may need to replace it using my dolly to help slide that out. Just take some of the weight off the front while I push on the back. Trying to mine the hoses so they don't run water all over the floor. It's a cement floor. It's not a big deal. They're off, but the residual water in the pipes could make a little mess. Might want to have a towel handy. So we're looking at the bag. We got two screws that hold the top cover on. This is a small cover on the back. It is a top cover, but not the large top cutter cover. Now we're going to swing around to the front. Got the lid to take off. Now I did take off the uh, covers that concealed the three screws on each side that go to the hinges. They just pop there. One, two, and three screws. You may want to hold on to that lid when the third screw comes out. It's almost a $300 lid. wiggle here left and right gets the hinge assembly out. they're unique for each side which doesn't mean that if you put one on the other side it will fit it'll fit backwards and the lid will not close it's a good place to store it Pop in the little dust cover off one side. I'm lucky enough to not have to do the other side. Dust cover is already lost. 
There is still a screw in there that has to come out if you're taking the cover off all the way. I'm not sure how deep I'm going to have to go, so I'm actually taking the cover off. That's the back screw for the entire cover. With the screws removed, the top lid just pops away, revealing the valve body. And that is a great place to put these parts. The valve body assembly with the hot and the cold inlet, the five relays, the five wires. On the bottom of that, those two black hoses, two hose clamps on it, five screws hold the entire assembly. And those buttons. Pop those off by either wiggling them by hand. This seems to work pretty slick. Three, four, and five. I already did loosen those. There's a hose clamp on it. Wrench and a hose clamp. Get it right off of there. So that bottom part, we'll need to harvest that for the new one. The new assembly, which showed up in less than 24 hours through Amazon. You can see there's some debris in there. That's just a small part of it. Mine came in, it was 34 bucks. You can see here on Amazon, you can even click the apply coupon, you get it for a little less. Depends on which one you choose. Mine showed up in a plain, plain brown box inside an Amazon wrapper with no packing whatsoever. That's okay, pretty tough plastic. Only mine's gray instead of white. That's okay, it was the flavor of the day at the factory. Maybe it's a date thing, I don't know. There's two filters in line. You can peek in the bottom of the box a little bit. Maybe you can see it. There's two other filters that came with it. They're spares. Someday maybe I'll use them. So that just slides off there. There's two silicone seals. Like that three silicone seals that attach the two pieces. The gray one's the one going in. And we're retiring the white one. Recombine that with the other one. Don't lose those seals. They will come off if you mess with them. Putting the pipes back on. Slides right on. They're barbed. Here comes the other one. Pop. Got your little clamp tool. Or some pliers. Slide it after you grab it. Release. Grab the little ears. Slide it in. And release. Got five screws going on here. Once everything's in place, got to find the little screw holes and make sure everything's in line. If you're careful, you won't lose them all the way into the bottom. Which would be a great deal more disassembly than what you would be getting into if you were very careful not to lose them down in there. One neat little trick is if you hold your finger against the screw in on the bit, guide the combination right over the hole. You'll get the screw into it in position easily. And give it a spin. Do not over torque these, it's just plastic. 
that drill could easily or over torque it. There are settings on there that you could adjust it so that it is much softer touch. I'm used to that drill. I'm not sponsored by, but DeWalt is a very handy and reliable tool. Reconnecting those wires. They pretty much lay in the correct position. And they're in order off of the wire limb. Swing into the front here. We're going to put that cover back on. There's some guides on the back. Once you have it in the right spot, give a little wiggle left and right. Settling in position and pretty much have it pop and it's <laughs> two screws in the front. They're kind of unique to that spot. And we're just going to locate that into the right spot. Can get this wrong, and it will just bind on your screws. And you'll have to remove the screws multiple times until you have it in the right spot. It just won't fit right. A little wiggle, a little shake. So right in. So we're going to put those two screws that go beneath the lid hinge area. You can't get those out without removing that lid. Just plastic. Be careful. Got two screws for that back cover. And that's that. I'm going to pop those two back top screws in as well, since we're back there. Front two, that's the covered one, that's the, the one. Get our little lid cover back in there. Not a biggie. But I only have one. That's okay. All four of those back screws, the bottom two and the top two, are different. We're going to go for a lid. Okay. Holding the $300 part in position to prepare to put those hinge assemblies back in. And that was a quick edit delete right there, as I did put them in backwards. It just won't close. Three screws. There you go. To guide it. So we got three on each side, and wow, that closes nice the first try. There is a touch of alignment you can do to this. So what we get going on here is a bucket setup with the two charge hoses for the washer. I am trying to drain out perhaps debris out of the pipes. This is well water, so 
we see iron. As you can tell, once that bucket it's a little full, got that yellow orange color to it. That's the iron. Plus, these pipes never see full flow, which I'm giving it right now, so some of the debris is washing through these pipes. Not a bad thing, it's not going to end up in the clothes. You see, too, I actually did three buckets. Don't try to fill them all the way, they get a little heavy. I'm going to reconnect those pipes while it's in its position. Those hoses reach. It isn't necessary to tighten them much beyond hand tight. Those rubber seals give up quite a bit. They, they'll cover the distance. But I worry about such things. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of tightening. Those are plastic fittings, so don't go too tight. So that's the drain hose. I don't have quite enough room, so I'm going to bring it a little closer. My connection clamps on. Yours may just fit in a hole in the pipe. But I do recommend some kind of zip tie or something to keep it from popping out of that hole Mine hose clamps on. I'm going to put the power connection on my ground fault plug. This thing is essentially done except for the little covers that go over the hinge screws. Sliding it carefully into position. Don't try to push it all the way to the back. You'll just pinch pipes and wires, and it'll actually transmit the noise into the wall. Also I'll leave a little bit of a gap between the two machines so it doesn't rattle against the other one. So we're going to turn on that water. You may want to check those fittings where they connect, make sure you don't have any leaks. Might be a small, small leak, but yeah, a small leak can build up over time. Those, as you can see, only fit one way. And I found every way except. That's not it. There you go. The thing is done. Time for a test. Powering it up. You take a look. They go through a sensing period every time you start them up. It's weighing by giving it a little bit of force and then it tests the amount of braking force it has to apply. By doing that it knows the size of the load. goes through its little song and dance. It goes through a full speed of a spin. And it finally gets to the part where it has determined the weight of the clothing articles in there. It will start the cycle. As you can see, the water is flowing. And that's a lot of flow compared to what we did have. We have found the problem. That is filling, and it's filling nicely. That's going to reduce the amount of cycle time by quite a bit. Also, the fact that I didn't have to go back and do it again. Sometimes it was up to three times to complete a load, and I had to restart the whole thing. I'm testing the lid to make sure the security feature on it it locks. It worked. Awesome. That's the new hose I put on. It's not new, it's one I had kicking around. I wish I could find the other one. There you go. 
a lot nicer. That has that swivel connection too. That's the model number. And I sure do appreciate you choosing us to help you out through your rebuilding of that washing machine. Give us a like if you would. Sure appreciate it. Share it if you like.